Hello, today is April 4th, 2023, and I would like to bring you this day in history. Just after 6 p.m. on April 4th, 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. is fatally shot while standing on the balcony outside his second story room at the Lorraine Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee. The civil rights leader was in Memphis to support a sanitation worker strike and was on his way to dinner when a bullet struck him in the jaw and severed his spinal cord. King was pronounced dead after his arrival at Memphis Hospital. He was 39 years old. In the months before his assassination, Martin Luther King became, became intensively concerned with the problems of economic inequality in America. He rec he organized a poor people's campaign to focus on issues including a march on Washington and in March 1968 traveled to Memphis Memphis to support a poorly treated African American sanitation workers on March 28th a worker protest march led by King ended in violence and the death of an African American teenager King left the city but vowed to return in early April to lead another demonstration. On April 3rd, back in Memphis, King gave his last sermon saying, we've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter to me now because I've been to the mountaintop and he's allowed me to go to the mountain and I've looked over and I've seen the promised land and I may not, I may not, get there with you but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land a day after speaking those words Dr. King was shot and killed by a sniper as word of the assassination spread riots broke out in cities all across the United States and the National Guard troops were deployed in Memphis and Washington DC on April 9th, King was laid to rest in his hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. Tens of thousands of people lined the streets to pay tribute to King's casket as it passed by in a wooden frame cart drawn by two mules. The evening of King's murder, a Remington 30 6 I hope I'm saying that right. A fire hunting rifle was found on the sidewalk beside a rooming house one block from the room. Lorraine Hotel. During the next several weeks, the rifle, eyewitness reports, and fingerprints on the weapon all implicated one, a single suspect. An escaped, escaped convict, James Earl Ray. A two-bit criminal, Ray escaped a Missouri prison in April 1967 while serving a sentence for a holdup. In May 1968, a massive manhunt for Ray began. The FBI eventually determined that he had obtained a Canadian passport under a false identity, which at the time was relatively easy. On June 8, Scott on June 8th, Scotland Yard investigators arrested Ray at the London airport. He was trying to fly to Belgium with the eventual, with the eventual goal, he later admitted, of reaching Mogadishu. Mogadishu, now called Zimbabwe, was at the time ruled by an oppressive and internationally committed white majority government. Extradited to the United States, Ray stood before a Memphis judge in March 1969 and pleaded guilty to King's murder in order to avoid the electric chair. He was sentenced to 99 years in prison. Three days later, he attempted to withdraw his guilty plea, claiming he was innocent of King's assassination and had been set up as a patsy in a larger conspiracy. He claimed that in 1968, a 
mysterious man named Raul had approached him and recruited him into a gun running enterprise. On April 4th, 1968, he said he realized that he was to be the fall guy for King's assassination and fled to Canada. Ray's motion was denied and were as were his dozen other requests for a trial during the next 29 years. During the 1990s, the widow and children of Martin Luther King Jr. spoke publicly in support of Ray and his claims, calling him innocent and speculating about an assassination conspiracy involving the U.S. government and military U.S. authorities were in cons conspiristic minds implicating circumstantially. FBI Director J. Er J. Edgar Hoover obsessed over King, who he thought was under communist influence. For the last several years, for the last six years of his life, King underwent constant wire tapping and harassment by the FBI. Before his death, Dr. King was monitored by U.S. military intelligence, which may have been asked to watch King after he publicly denounced the Vietnam War in 1967. Furthermore, by calling for racial economic reforms in 1968, including guaranteed annual income for all incomes for all, King was making a few making few new friends in the Cold War era US government. Over the years the assassination had been re-examined by the House Select Committee on Assassinations the Shelby County and Tennessee District Attorney's Office and three times by the U.S. Justice Department. The investigations all ended with the same conclusions. James Earl Ray killed Martin Luther King Jr. The House Committee acknowledged that a low-level conspiracy might have existed involving one or more accomplices to Ray, but uncovered no evidence to definitely proved this theory. In addition to the mountain of evidence against him, such as his fingerprints on the murder weapon and his admit, admitted presence at the rooming house on April 4th, Ray had a definite motive to assassinate King. Hatred. According to his family and friends, he was an outspoken racist who informed them of his intent to kill Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He died in 1998. I want to thank you for watching today and I want you to stay safe and stay blessed and remember to smile because I love you but more importantly our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves you the most and that's the best love you can have. And now to continue with my 12 positive thoughts and affirmations. These are different. One, there is no one better than myself. Two, I am enough. Three, I get better every single day. Four, I am an amazing person. Five, all of my problems have solutions. Six, today I am a leader. Seven, I forgive myself for my mistakes. <clears throat> Eight, my challenges help me grow. Nine, I am perfect just the way I am. 10, my mistakes help me learn and grow. 11, today is going to be a great day. And 12, I have courage and confidence. I wanna thank you all for watching and would you please comment down below and give me a thumbs up. And would you think about being becoming a serendipity subby doesn't cost a thing it's totally free it really helps my channel out along with the comments and the thumbs up all right everybody have a blessed day and i'll see you in my next video bye everybody